14. A radio drama in one act. Dedicated to the loving memory of Siti Nur Aini Nabila, known lovingly as Napski. Script by Alice Gerstenberg, 1919. Actors Gina Filiana as Mrs. Pringle, Siti Nur Aini Nabila as Elaine Pringle, and Naufal Tarik as Dunham. Directed and produced by Felix Abik. Dunham, I've just had word with Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who is very ill. He sent me these flowers. Well, it's a good thing he did. I don't approve of a young man refusing dinner invitations at the very last minute. I'll take the box and paper, Mrs. Springle. Oh, it's too bad. After you've said it all so beautifully. And it's getting so late. Someone might be coming any moment. How was Cook? Cook's in a temper. As always, madam. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. As long as she serves us a good dinner, I don't care how much she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? I'm sorry to have to say it, madam, but there's such an awful blizzard out, he's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh, dear me. Yes, I should have ordered an awning. But who expected a storm like this? Here are the place cards, mother. And the diagram. Shall I put them around? Oh, yes, dear. Elaine, I'm going up to look after your father. He's so helpless about his ties. Remove one plate, Dunham. Uh, re remove one plate, madam. Oh, oh, madam, it is a certainty. You wouldn't sit down with thirteen. Thirteen? Why, you're right. Thirteen. We can never sit down with thirteen. That's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend. Nothing. He's just one of those careless men who never answer the invitations in time. His flowers, indeed, to make me forgive him. Well, now look at the troubles he'd put me into. Thirteen! I wonder whom I could get to come in the last minute. Quick, Elaine, help me think. Um, there's always Uncle George. He never opens his head. Um, Mr. Morgan, madam? He always tells a joke or two. Why, yes, yes, Dunham. That's clever of you. Hello, Central. Lakeview 5971. At once, please. Elaine, dear, your hair is much too tight. Pull it out. Pull it out. Come here. Mr. Morgan's well. This is Mrs. Springle speaking. From across the street. Yes. When Mr. Morgan comes in, please tell him to call me up right away. I want him to dine with us. In about ten minutes. You expect him. Have him call me right away. Now, if he shouldn't get it, then what'll I do? Well, mother, I don't have to be at the table. It's your party anyway. Everybody's married and older than I am. Didn't I put you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions! He's worth millions! Well, he won't be giving me any. Can't he marry you? Aren't you going to try to make a good match for yourself? I fling every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you finish the rest yourself? It's no use, mother. You're trying to marry me off to anyone as important as he is. He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm as afraid of him as I'd be afraid of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales? Oh, what wouldn't I give to have the Prince of Wales in my house? New York has lost its heart to him. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth yesterday that I'd give anything to have the Prince here. I would establish my social positions for life. And I have such a reputation for being a wonderful hostess. Oh dear me. The phone. Hello? Mrs. Sedwick? Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. 
What? No! Oh! Caught in a snowdrift? Can't get another car? Good. The widow can't come. That leaves us twelve. I move two plates, Dunham. Oh, that's a shame. I'm heartbroken. Oh, my dear. How can we get along without you? But have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. Well, I'm glad she dropped out. <clears throat> Central, give me Lakeview 5971. Denim, with two less, you can save two cocktails and at least four glasses of champagne. Hello? Has Mr. Morgan come in yet? Well, don't give him the message I telephoned before about crossing the street to Mrs. Springles for dinner. It's too late. You understand? Well, anyway, I've invited Clem, returned my indebtedness and saved my champagne. Besides... The liquor is getting low, madam. What with prohibition and entertaining so much... Wait, but mother, if you only have... Twelve people, father can't sit at the head of the table. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too undignified when the man of the house is pushed to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. Oh my goodness, how absurd. I always forget. Of course, twelve is an impossible number. <sighs> oh, I don't want to put any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby. Such a cat. I wouldn't give her the honor. And Mrs. Oh. Answer it, Dunham. Hello? Mrs. Pringle's residence. A message. Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby. The doctor says your baby has the chicken pox. Chicken pox? Understand. Elaine! Mother! Uh, understand, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret, and also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. Well, that's four out. Then you're only eight. Quick, the plate's done them. We know someone to invite in the last minute. Uh, the Hatwoods. They don't serve drinks when they entertain. I can't afford to invite them to drink mine. Um, the Greens? She's not interesting enough. Oh, oh, Mr. Conley? He never makes the dinner call, even after all the times I've invited him. Oh, Pastor Longley. <laughs> Not at the same table with you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's far too pretty. Too clever. Oh, where's our book? Um, um, them. Oh, oh, the tuppers. The tuppers? Good heavens, Elaine. Six in the family. That would get us back to 14. Then father could sit at the head of the table. Well, try them. I'll rush and tell your father to hold up the drawing room. <coughs> Ridgeway 9325. This is Elaine Pringle. What topper am I speaking to? Oh! Ella! Hello! I hope you haven't finished your dinner. We had a party arranged here, and the last moment everybody's been dropping out. Mm-hmm. The blizzard. Can't you flock your family around the corner and eat with us? Mother and I thought we knew you well enough to call you like this at the seventh hour. You what? Oh, fine. Six more plates, Dunham. What? Oh... Um, um, well, but, uh, Dunham, get mother!
quick. Yes? Yes. Of course. Love it. Why, you certainly. Yes, my dear. All right. Oh! Oh, great Caesar! What have I done? What's the matter? Elaine? What is... No, I've done it. I've... I've just done it. But... But... But I couldn't get out of it. I... I just couldn't... You weren't here and I always lose my head and bungle things up! Oh! But... But what? <sighs> Don't keep us waiting like this. What is it? Okay. So... I invited Ella and the family, and she accepted, and then she said they had two more house guests, and would it be alright, and of course I said it would, and now, now, now we're 16. Six, 16? Um, um, <laughs> but, but madam, the table's not that long. Elaine, that's... Just like you. No tact, no worldly wisdom. If I'd been at the phone, I'd have politely said that my table... But you weren't at the phone. You ought to attend to such message yourself. You know I always lose my head. But, but, but the dishes, madam. And, and we only have 14 squabs. I won't eat any. But I must not be disgraced. We'll have to make the best of it. And... Instead of another board. But mother, I don't need to sit at the table. You are going to sit right next to Oliver Farnsworth. Now, I don't wish to hear another word about it. But can't we squeeze them in without all the work of adding another board? If I move the plates and the chairs closer, then maybe... Have you forgotten that Mr. Tupper weighs something like 250 pounds? And Mrs. Conley has no waistline. It can't be done. Cook. Cook is in a rage, madam. She says she, she has only prepared for 14. Oh, I can't help it. She'll have to prepare for 16. Tell her to open cans of soup and, and vegetables but, and... But, but, but the ice cream forms and, and the gelatin molds and... I'll pretend I don't like them. And, and I'll pretend I'm on a diet. But I really wouldn't have to be at the table. Be still. <gasps> the telephone. Now what? Oh, don't answer it. It's driving me mad. <sighs> mm -hmm. Hello? Yes? This is Mrs. Pringle. Oh, yes. Jessica. What? The blizzard. You're cold. Too dangerous. Oh, Jessica, you poor dear. Yes, of course, your husband is right. It would be foolhardy. Put on a master plaster. Hot toddy. Go to bed. Oh, I'm so sorry. There. That's wonderful. Now we are just 14. But the cards are all wrong. Only six are coming who were invited originally. You'll have to make another diagram. How do you want them seated? <sighs> Give it to me. Here are some fresh cards. Oh, what a mess! I spent hours over the diagram. So much depend upon having guests seated harmoniously. Ah, oh, there's the front doorbell. Dunham. I told Annie to answer it for you, but go, peek into the drawing room and, and, and tell me who it is. Oh, you murderous instrument! What have you to say? No, what? Hello? Who? Mr. Farnsworth? Mr. Oliver Farnsworth? No? You're his secretary. He's what? instructed you to make his excuses. He had to leave for Boston at once on a very important business. Oh! How dare he? How dare he? The last moment like this. 
no regard for a hostess' feelings, no regard for the efforts she goes to to provide an evening's enjoyment, and such a good dinner I planned, and he promised he would come. Oh, business, I don't believe it. He didn't want to exert himself, was afraid of freezing in the blizzard, as if he didn't have half a dozen limousines to carry him to the door. Selfish. Downright rude and worth millions. Just a match for you, Elaine. And I was bound you should meet him and sit next to him at the table. Oh, now, and now I don't know when I can give you a chance like that again. I'm perfectly furious. I'll never speak to him again. I won't be treated that way. Perhaps he really did have business and was called away. And I, one of the most important hostesses in the city. People clamoring to receive my invitations. All my affairs are a success. I insist that they shall be. I can't bear a failure. I won't have a failure. He was my most important guest. He's such a man's man. So important financially. Every other man considers it an honor to meet him. And now not coming. I'm furious. Furious. It's all this damnable blizzard. Now I will have to stay away from the table. His not coming makes us 13 again. Go to bed. Go up to the nursery. I'll send you milks and crackers. But mother, it's not my fault that he had business out of town. Oh yes it is. If you'd perk up a bit and not be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about your attraction from other men and curious to meet you himself. Oh, what a family I have. No one to help me with my ambitions. Go to bed. I certainly won't sit down to 13. Go to bed. Get out of my sight. Um, it was Mr. Morgan, madam. Mr. Morgan? But a telephone is made to tell him not to come. He couldn't have received the second message, madam, for I heard him explaining to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephone invitation. That makes you 13 again. Unless you don't want me to go to bed. <laughs> of course I don't want you to go to bed, honey. We're back to where we started. 14 Dunham. I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Anyways, uh, Annie told me there were several moachers making their way through the snow. It's late now, and Cook's swearing about the dinner getting too dry. No! I won't answer it! Oh, I should say not! Hmm. Hello? What is it? Yes? Yes! Mrs. Tupper! Yes! Mrs. Tupper! Oh, but now you must come. We are prepared for you. Yes, for eight of you. Oh, your daughter told my daughter about your house guest, and of course we're delighted to have them. But now we are set for you. Every plate is set. But your daughter was quite right. Oh, it was not an imposition at all. But you must come now. Of course my daughter had authority to invite the guest of... Oh, eight is not at all a big number. There is room. The table is all set. Oh, but I beg of you. But my dear, you're not imposing. Oh, but how foolish of you to take that stand. Why, my dear? My dear? Oh. Now what do you think of that? Mrs. Tupper is perfectly furious at Ella for telling you about the house guests and says Ella has no tact. That nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six. So she's leaving Ella and Henry at home. Only six are coming. Oh. Remove to place Dunham. We're twelve after all. But if we leave at twelve, father can't sit at the end. Oh, my goodness. I shall go mad. I'll never entertain again. Never. Never. People ought to know whether they're coming or not, but they accept and regret and regret and accept. They're driving me wild. Oh, this is my last dinner party. My very last. A fiasco. 
an utter fiasco. A half hazard crowd hurried together when I had planned everything so beautifully. Now, how shall I seat them? How shall I seat them? Well, if, if I put Mr. Tupper here, and then Mr. Mrs. Conley there, and then Mrs. Tupper has to sit next to her husband, and, and if I want Mr. Morgan there, oh, oh my God, it's impossible. I might as well put their names in a hat and draw them out of random. Oh, never again. I'm through. Through with society, with parties, with friends. I wipe my slate clean. Oh, they'll miss my entertainment. They'll wish they had been more considerate. After this, I'm going to live for myself. I'm going to be selfish and hard and unsociable and drink my liquor myself instead of offering it gratis to the whole town. I'm through. Through with men like Oliver Farnsworth. I don't care how rich they are, how influential they are, how important they are. Oh, they're nothing without courtesy and, and consideration. Oh, business, often train, nonsense. Oh, didn't want to come, didn't want to meet my sweet, pretty girl. Didn't want to marry her. Oh, well, it's not good enough for you. Don't you marry him. Don't you dare marry him. I won't let you marry him. Do you hear? Oh, if you, if you tried to elope or anything like that, I'd break it off. Oh, yes, I would. Oliver Farnsworth would never get recognition from me. He's beneath my notice. Oh, I hate Oliver Farnsworth. Um, a note from Mr. Farnsworth, madam. A note from Mr. Farnsworth? Um, yes, madam. There are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall. They presented, um, this letter. He said he was the secretary. Uh, aside from that, all the other guests are upstairs in the drawing room, madam. I counted around twelve in all, including you and Mr. Pringle and Miss Elaine. But the two gentlemen downstairs, madam, are waiting for your answer. The one gentleman's face looked very familiar, madam. But I just can't place him, although I'm sure I've seen his face somewhere. Seen his face? Somewhere? Oh my goodness, Elaine! It's the Prince of Wales! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The secretary said you cut off the telephone or central disconnected you. He was about to tell you that Mr. Farnsworth knew that the blizzard had prevented His Highness from keeping an engagement way uptown. The Prince of Wales sitting in my lower hall, waiting for me to ask him to dinner. Uh, uh, then we'll be 13 again. Um, there's the secretary, miss. He is his bodyguard. Oh, certainly. The secretary. Elaine, we shall be 14 at dinner. Serve the cocktails, Dunham. The guests may sit anywhere they choose. I shall bring the prince in with me. But, mother, wasn't it nice of Oliver Fansworth to send a prince in his place? Oh, didn't I always say that Oliver Farnsworth was the most considerate of men? I think I shall like Mr. Farnsworth. Silly child. It's too late now to like Mr. Farnsworth. It's time now to like the prince. Oh, I always manage somehow to be the most successful of hostesses. Thank God for the blizzard.